بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد 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 اللهم صل على السلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الميامين المنتجبين واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد قد ورد في دعاء المعرفة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم عرفني نفسك فإنك إن لم تعرفني نفسك لم أعرف نبيك اللهم عرفني رسولك فإنك إن لم تعرفني رسولك لم أعرف حجتك اللهم عرفني حجتك فإنك إن لم تعرفني حجتك ضللت عن ديني اللهم لا تمتني ميتة جاهلية ولا تزغ قلبي بعد إذ هديتني برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين صلى الله عليه وسلم First of all what I would like to respond to Brother Sayyid Ali Akbar that uh, it's you guys are amazing because when I'm giving lecture I see the eye contact of the mu'mineen and when I see the youngsters they are focusing with me that uh, that pleases me a lot you see that means there are youngsters they are hungry and this this is one of the unique places there are very few places when you see youngsters some places youngsters they will say oh they're still taking too much time but mashallah all these nights I've seen the youngsters the youth they have been uh, with continuous eye contact with me and that's amazing for that I want to give you a hadiyah I want to give you a gift of salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad so uh, and last night I was impressed because after my English medlis I go and we go we do azadari in English for the small kids so I have nohas in English for every night of Muharram so last night we did know how Janab al Yazgar in English and mashallah the kids they enjoyed it and then uh, I was uh, impressed that some of the small kids they were paying attention to my lecture mashallah and I was very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these small kids are also um, trying to retain quite a few, few things from the lecture so this is some a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's a unique community from every aspect and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep this uniqueness because shaitan can take this uniqueness away be careful you see so be thankful so this uniqueness continues so uh, last night a uh, few uh, things were left I'm just going to quickly uh, catch up with it and then continue uh, uh, or start our topic today last night I mentioned about shaking hands now European countries shaking hands is a big problem to our community members so what should we do like cross-gender shaking hands like male female female male you don't get a job in many countries if you don't shake hands you get uh, harassed in school uh, in public schools you there are a lot of things happening not in every school 
not in every places. Like in Sweden, if somebody harasses, you get sued them. And the government, uh, the, 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 they have to pay you thousands and thousands of kroners just because of not shaking hand, you deprive that person from job. So this is something which uh, many countries, they don't like, that people are free to um, adhere to their religion and practice their religion, to do whatever they want to do. Correct? Yes. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay? Which is to many people, it's awful. To many people, it's nasty. It's a serious negative. But then, the communities, they have to respect them. So, so if we compare not shaking hand to many communities, I'm, I'm not giving a judgment, I'm just giving a general norm. Not shaking hand is not as bad as, men, as how people they see. We, I said we respect every peaceful human being. Yesterday I said it, today I'm saying it before, every peaceful human being, we need to respect them. But there are many people, they have, they have very bad, disgusting, we, correct? So I'm not saying, I'm saying, okay, I'm saying in general. So if shaking, not shaking hand is not as, as that disgusting when you don't shake hands with a woman or a woman does not shake hand. It's, it's not that. So if those, those people are respected and we have to respect them, why isn't somebody who does not shake hand should be respected? Why we are having problems? Because of us, us, we. They have strongly presented their situation and made the community accept them. The Jewish people, they have made the community accept them. Why we Muslims are so behind? And but because we are fighting each other on the Azadaris, on the moon sightings, on the, the Sahabas and this and that. This is what, what is the problem with the Muslim community. If we, we are united Muslims, we are more than the Jewish community. More than them. We respect every Jewish, every... Again, I'm not giving any negative things here. I'm just trying to say they can have their rights. If the Jewish communities, they are the minorities, they can have their rights. Heck, what happened to us Muslims? Why can't we present our rights? No, in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other. Why? Because there is a respect to both genders. Why don't you guys understand? You guys and making us respect them. So can't you also respect our thought and our practice in not being able to shake hands with cross genders? The problem is us. In the United States, when 9-11 happened, I mentioned the interfaith, my interfaith journey started, and that was my first experience. So what happened? We had an open house to let the people know that we are not the terrorists. We have been suffering the terrorism for 1,400 years. Since the attack on the door of Fatima to Zahra. Salaamu Alaikum. The Shia communities have been terrorized. The day of the wafat, or death of, of the Prophet وسلم, we were terrorized. Our Imams were terrorized. Karbala is a big story where every year, a, a true story, a true event, where every year we condemn terrorism. Every type of terrorism is condemned. So we have been subjected to the terrorism since 1400. And every year, these days of Ashura are the days of condemnation of terrorism, Yazidism, which, is, which equals to terrorism. So, the, so, so, so we wanted to, have to know that the, the, this, these 9-11, they don't have anything to do with the, with the Shias and they don't have anything to do with the Sunnis. They don't have anything to do with Islam. These are, they have some particular agenda. And the question is, we don't know who did it. Still now, nobody knows exactly who did it. And then, no, Islam, Islam, Islam. And Islam is terrorized because of an event which has happened. And they say a person is innocent until proven to be guilty. 
and United States law, judiciary law is very strict that you can't accuse somebody without evidence. And the whole Muslim community has been accused of committing the acts of terrorism. What kind of double standard is this? This is not justice. This is injustice. And they claim we are the people of justice. That's wrong. Well, what happened to your constitution? What happened to all this concept of justice and the beauty which United States used to present? It all changed. So anyhow, we come back. So what happened? We did open house. And women, they would come and try to shake hands with me. So I said, oh, I'm sorry in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other. So they would say, how do you guys, guys get married then? I said, oh my goodness, I need to change. Because I don't want, this is a very fast moment. I have to say as fast as possible because I don't want them to carry this notion that Islam says women are dirty. From where did this come? It's not the school of Ahlul Bayt. Some of the school of companion, they say, if you shake hands with women, it's like breaking a wind or your wudu becomes invalid. It's there in the fatwa. So, so obviously there are people, they say, oh, so women are that dirty that your wudu evolution becomes invalidated. This is a very extreme, narrow-minded school of uh, thought. It does not represent the majority of the Sunni and obviously, unanimously, no Shia scholar has said that when you touch a woman, your wudu becomes invalid. So then some people, when they get, oh, women are dirty. Yeah, that is wrong. That is not right. That is negative thing. So I have to explain as fast as possible because it's in their mind that the Muslims, they consider women are dirty. Because there are some Jewish laws, they demonize women. There are some Christian law. If you open the, the Bible and the Christian laws, you will see demonization of women. But in Islam, it's not like that. Somehow, the traditional Jewish and the traditional Christian thoughts have been infiltrated in the minds of people and somehow they have applied it on Muslim communities. And that is also injustice. So in Islam, we don't have like that. So, so I, I had to change because I don't want this lady to take <laughs> negative, negative thought about me or about Islam. So next lady comes, you say, I have to change. What should I do? What should I do? Okay. Uh, she stretches her, she stretches her hand. I say, in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other unless they are married. You can shake hands with me. I'm married. Oh no, this does, it's not working out. I have to change. I have to change because, so then I came to a final conclusion, a very fast, uh, a small statement. And uh, there, there was a Texan old woman, she came. So she stretched her hand. I said, in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other unless they are married to each other or related with blood. Don't worry, I don't shake hands, I hug. I said, oh my goodness, sorry, I'm not a hugger. So, so that's the thing that, you know, that I had to say, and many of them in my eight years of experience in the United States, all of those whom I told them this, they all said, please forgive us. We need to learn. We need to know from you. Please let us know how to respect you, how to respect your religion. Look at the response. So who is in error here, them or us? We are to be blamed. We are to be blamed. There was a congressman, there was a, there was a, a celebration of Muslim community and uh, a congressman came and his wife came. So uh, he stretched his hand and I shook hand. His wife stretched. I did not, but our Sunni Maulana, he did. So I told the, I'm sorry, and she was red, and I was red, and she said, I'm sorry, and I said, I'm sorry, please forgive us if, it's a, if, if there's any kind of disrespect, please forgive us, it's not intended, it's just in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other unless they're married with each other or related with blood. Oh no, you forgive us, please, we need to learn from you. Then I asked the Sunni brother Maulana, he said, uh, you don't have this? He said, no, I will do my wudu later on. So that means his wudu broke, you see? So he was one of those who say that the wudu breaks. But not all the Sunnis, they said that. So then the congressman, look at this. He started giving scholarships to our Muslim youngsters. So there were girls. So the Muslim girls, they were coming from the Sunni community. 
they were stretching their hands. They were stretching their hands. And he was like stretching his hand. So after that, we, ha we were like uh, having like uh, dinner. So he was telling me, Imam, I was surprised. Uh, I said, by what? He said, when you told me that in Islam, men and women, they cannot touch each other unless they are related with blood or married with each other. I remember when I was young, we had so many Pakistani neighbors and they used to come to our house. We used to go to their house and we had this no shaking hands with cross gender. So what did it happen? Did the rule change? I said, no, the people changed. The people changed. And he said, that's why I was not stretching. When I saw the girls, they were stretching their hands. I would stretch my hand. If they will not stretch their hands, I will leave it like that and just give them the scholarship. So this is a congressman from United States. My personal experience. So we have to educate others. They would appreciate and learn from us. Many of them are very racist, racist, racist. Racists are minorities. But because of our attitude, they are going to become majority. So why don't we embrace the Western communities who are moderate, who would love to learn from us, who would respect us. As I said, we respect their way of life. They would love to respect our way of life, you see. But we are not doing enough to let them know what is our way of life. Because these countries are based on freedom of religion. So now we come to another, the ruling. Okay, what is the ruling of shaking hands? Obviously, I did a paper in University of Lund. Uh, that was my, one of my uh, final papers about shaking hands, cross-gender shaking hands. I found out that it's not a Shia issue. There are so many Sunni narrations and fatwas prohibiting shaking hands of the cross-genders. And our Shia hadith, hadith of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq oh. 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 And the fatwas of our scholars, they are all unanimously indicating this. So why? They ask why, and it is very important why. It is just to block the doors of temptations. Because Islam wants to respect the women. Many times you might shake hands, and when the skin touches the skin, there might be wrong or ill feelings. There might be. Not necessary 100%, but there might be. Islam says, no, respect the woman. Don't think of woman as an object of sex and lust, that she's just created for your lust and fulfillment. She has something to offer to the, in the community, in the society. Look at her as a human being. For example, when, um, when there's a firm, they, they are hiring people. So if a man goes and gives CV and all the disqualifications, they will look at the qualifications, huh, graduated from this, 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 and then they will look at, not look at his beard, not, not look at his face mostly, and they will look at the qualification. But when a woman goes to apply, the first thing the guy will see, her face, her beauty, her, um, her, her, her flexibility and all those kind of things, in most cases, because I've seen this in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, where women would, would complain that when we go to apply for a job, they expect more from us than the male gender. And that is wrong. That is haram. You see? So they expect that how much pleasure she could give to the customers by her looks and by... Why aren't you treating her like men? You look the qualification of men. Look at the qualification. So Islam doesn't like that. Islam wants, if you are treating women, treat her like you treat men with dignity. Don't, don't take her as an object of lust, advertisement, sex, and all those kind of things. So that's why when you touch somebody, there might be some lustful sensation or feelings. So Islam wants to block the door. So Islam cannot discriminate. Oh, you don't shake hands because you have lustful feelings in your, inside your heart. You can shake your hands, you are okay, you don't have lustful feelings inside your heart. We cannot do like that. We cannot go look into the hearts of the people and intention. So block the doors of temptation. Respect the woman. And the same thing, respect the men. Both are respected, both genders. So that's why 
cross gender needs to be respected. And that's the main thing. It's not demonizing women. It's not considering women filthy or something. That is all ancient biblical uh, context. It's not Islamic context. Islam respected women from the, from the woman when she's a baby till the woman when she is uh, an old woman. So Islam respects. Since I have mentioned this, I'm going to mention uh, quickly how Islam respects women. Men should protest. Oh, Islam has given women too much rights. Uh, that is not fair. But Alhamdulillah, our men are mashallah, so polite and so nice that it's okay. Uh, as long as uh, they cook us nice chapati and nice karai gosh and chicken karai masala and all those kind of we are okay but uh, uh, let them have these rights so so we muslim men are okay for them having more rights it's, it's it's wrong to say so i was in a church in the united states and there was a majority of them were women so uh, they said that we need to know a lot of negativity is said about women in islam my youngsters remember this please don't forget this, forget this this so when a woman is a daughter the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said that whoever appraises his daughter on faith then he will be my neighbor in paradise ya rasulullah what about our boys that's discrimination ya rasulullah no the prophet had an aim why because in jahiliyat they used to bury the girls alive. You see, the Prophet wants to fight this culture. So people now are longing to have daughters. Ah, I don't want daughter, but no. If I'm going to be the neighbor of the Prophet, let me have a daughter. Let me have. They started longing for a daughter. And the Prophet wasallam, his two sons were died, but he had only one inheritor. Fatima to Zahra and this being one daughter is historically proven by the case of Fadr. When you see Fadr, they would come to Zahra's uh, descendants. They would not go to other girls' descendants. So the other girls were prophet took care of them, adopted them. But this was the only girl who deserves the, uh, the inheritance from prophet. So Fadr was taken from the descendants of Zahra, given it to them. Taken, given, taken. No other Air other than Zahra <coughs> so that's another issue so daughter uh, um, um, just a reminder uh, one case it's mentioned in a uh, book of Ahl Sunnah the second Khalifa is in the time of Jahiliya in the time of Jahiliya he used he, he was saying he used to hate women and 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 uh, he has his daughter he buried alive and then uh, he hit his sister striked his sister and slapped her on face when he realized that she had become muslim he strapped her uh, slapped her very hard that she started bleeding it is recorded in the in their in their history so in the jahiliya they say omar says uh, he, he says one thing makes me laugh on myself one thing makes me cry so they said, oh, Omar, what, 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 what is the thing which makes you laugh on yourself? They said that when I was in Jahiliya, I had an idol made out of date. You know date? Khajur. Okay? Khajur, date. So they said, one day I came and I was so hungry. And I didn't find food. So I just ate my God. Okay? So this is the level of mentality they had in Jahiliya. So, and then he said, whenever I remember this, it makes me laugh. And the one thing makes me cry. I had a nice cute daughter. And in Jahiliya, we used to hate daughters. So I dug a grave. And I was burying the girl. She was, she was because he had long beard. It looks like from the Riwayat. So the beard got dust, sand. So he says, my, my daughter was cleaning the dust from my beard. And whenever I remember that, and I buried her. I buried her alive. So this is how the Jahiliya was. So the Prophet wants to fight this culture, anti-women uh, culture. And that's why he started saying the praises that whoever will have daughter, the daughter is like a, a, a good deed. If you have a daughter in your house, it's a good deed. That means you're rewarded. And then to make sure, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to speak about this, but to make sure uh, when uh, a woman is your wife, then the Prophet ﷺ said, your wife is a Rayhana. You know what's a Rayhana? 
you must know Rehan Shairu. But this Rehan means this flower which has nice fragrance. You can smell nice fragrance from this flower. So your wife is like a flower. You will not throw the flower or uh, strike the flower. No, you will take gentle care of the flower. So your wife is a flower, not kahramana, not a kitchen maid. Okay? Don't deal with your life, even if she cooks a nice biryani and all those kind of things. She's your flower. She's your fragrance. How do you deal with your fragrance? This is Islam. This is Islam. And then, this, and this is our prophet. He said, Khairukum, the best amongst you. I know some of the people will say, Oh, you uh, are you're, you're, uh, letting our wives revolt against us today. Well, take it as a bitter medicine because that's the fact we need to speak. <laughs> so, uh, we have this, that Khairukum, our beloved prophet. He said, the best amongst you is the best in dealing with his spouse. خيركم خيركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهلي and I'm the best among all of you when I deal with my spouse. Imagine some of the spouses of the Prophet as they say in Urdu نات میں دم کر دیا تھا they tortured the Prophet so much torture psychological torture but the Prophet would observe patience even Allah said يا رسول الله give them talaq get rid of them no 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 talaq is the most abhorred things to you God I will never do something which you dislike. That's our beloved Prophet. Something Allah dislikes, makro, even it's halal. He don't want, he doesn't want to do. He wants to tolerate. He wants to do sabr. Nowadays, small, small things. I'm giving a divorce. Give me divorce. What is this? A child play? And our beloved Prophet is tolerating. Look into Surah Al-Tahreem. Surah Al-Tahreem, I don't have time to mention, but look, do your researches. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns two wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They accuse the Prophet of lying. The Prophet, the Quraysh, the idol worshippers would say, As-Sadiqul Ameen, the truthful and the trustworthy. And here two wives from inside his house are accusing him. What a problem. And then the Prophet is doing sabr. Let's learn. Let's learn our, from our beloved Prophet. Let's not hasten talaq, 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 talaq. For men and women both. Try not to destroy these youngsters, especially those who have kids. It's, it's, very, it's very important. Have patience, tolerance, jihad and nafs. Our beloved Prophet tolerated his 10 years of his life in Medina. Can't we just tolerate a little bit in this dunya for the sake of our beloved Prophet? So let's try to learn how to tolerate and embrace each other. The shaitan wants to divide, remember. So, when is your, she's your wife, you have to deal with her with respect. You see? People, they say, oh, only evidence, all, all the fatwas are, if a woman should listen to her husband. Okay? If she doesn't listen to her husband, curse be upon her. Well, this is, this hadith needs to be presented. That the, you have to deal with your wife with best of dealings. That, uh, let me tell you one more story since we are in this topic. Okay? Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad. You know Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad? He's not selling chicken karai masala. Okay? He is one of the Prophet's companions in Madinah Munawwara. So, what happened? He died. He was a very amazing Prophet. He died. So, the Prophet وسلم, did a unique funeral procession. Unique. Funeral procession. He walks and he does takbir. And he does. Once he was buried, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we have never seen you do this kind of unique procession for someone other than Saad. He said, what would I do? I saw the angels were doing that procession. I was doing the same way. So there were angels in this procession. Mother of Saad, you know how mother becomes glad. Mother of Sa'ad said, Man, man, laka ya Sa'ad. Bah, bah, bah. Rejoice it, Sa'ad. Enjoy it. Who is like you? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did all this in your funeral. So the Prophet said, in my words, of course, uh, 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 don't jump to your horses, O mother of Sa'ad. Okay? Wait, don't jump to conclusions. Say, why ya Rasulullah? 
Ah, oh, the pressure of the grave touched him. You know what's the pressure of the grave? When we die, our not we, inshallah, we pray that Allah protect us. When a person dies, the, the angels, they squeeze the hell out of the soul. Because the body does not affect. So the soul, if you open the grave after, sometimes you'll see the grave is as it is. So it's not the grave. The, the dead body feels that the walls of the graves are crushing him and running into each other. And running inside his body. So severe pain. It's a very painful first stage of death. Painful grave. We say just, if, a, if your wife does not hear you, you know, uh, she will have lana. Look at what happens this. Sa'ad. Angels in his procession. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing unique procession. Now here, Sa'ad. So what happened here, Rasulullah? Mother of Sa'ad said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ سَيِّئُ الْخُلْقِ مَا أَهْلًا His moral behavior was bad with his, with his wife. Bad, bad moral behavior with his wife. So don't just send Lana to your wife if she doesn't listen to you. Be prepared to the pressure of grave if you are not observing patience. It's both sides. It's both sides. So therefore, this is if a woman is wife. When a woman is mother, you all know. The paradise is under the, under the feet of the fathers. Correct? No. Mothers, we hear in the madrasa, mother. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so mother, ya, ya Rasulullah, why not father? What have we done? What, uh, what bad luck we have that our you know, trash is under your feet or some whatsoever, just my words. But the Prophet said, no, the mother. And then people, they say Islam is discriminating uh, women. You know, when I was saying this, uh, the pastor, he came... He came to the mic. Imam, we'll have to stop. We'll have, we'll have to stop you now here. Because if you continue, all our women will become Muslims. I said, they are most welcome to. Why are you stopping them? So there's a, women are treated like queen. You see, there are a lot of other things. I'm not going to carry on with this hukuk. If you know hukuk, then tomorrow there's Maulana Saab. Uh, aap next time nahi aaye. Bas bot ho gaya. Ye aakhri dafa hai aapki madlis. Oh, that's it. No. We have to know that women and men, they all have rights. I mentioned this in Middle East. I mentioned this in West. I mentioned this in Africa. Because this is what we learn from Islam. And unfortunately, the male gender, many times, they only present whatever is favorable to the male gender community members. And that is injustice. And uh, sorry for being blunt. You see, not all, but many times. The rights of women are not presented. And that's why the Westerners, they say, Islam is demonizing. Because we have not presented to our communities and we have not presented to them. So this is the thing that in Islam, uh, men and women, they cannot touch each other unless they are related with blood or uh, 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 married with each other. Now, so this is something about shaking hands. Now the ruling. Maraja, they say, if you really are in a very difficult situation, an embarrassment which is not tolerable, haraj, difficulty and hardship, then just go ahead and do the salam. If you are afraid that you might be demonized in your course or in your school or in your university or in your... So you can just go and shake hands, but not like warm and like uh, squeezing a mango, you see? You know how to squeeze mango, all of your Pakistanis? So you know the arm? So people, they squeeze arm. Don't, don't shake hands if you are majboor, if you are under, uh, under pressure. Uh, and you, if you don't do that, and you don't have any other option, so just light shake hand uh, that they, they know that uh, it's something problematic for you. But you are doing it just to prevent the embarrassment and the awkward situation if it is not tolerable and might lead you to harmful consequences. Okay? So this is the fatwa. I hope it is clear. Now we come. In, in, in Europe, in Sweden, we have this mas'ala. They say, we don't have any problem if you don't have, shake hands with the woman. We have a problem of discrimination. So if you don't shake hands with men and women equally, we are okay. Is shaking hands wajib? Tell me. No. 
Huh? Is shaking hand vajib? No. Then heck, leave shaking hands. If shaking hand is going to cause you to fall into haram, then just leave shaking hands with men so you will not be obligated to shake hands with women. You can tell them just in my faith, I can't shake hands with men and women. Then they will have be happy. But it is, it is really awkward sometimes that women are standing and they don't know anything about our culture. We shake hands and then we don't shake hands with women. We shake hands with men. It's kind of awkward. You see? Or either you put a pair of gloves in your hand because Imam Sadiq said that Allah, 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 Allah. you can shake hands from behind the cloth. So for us, the Maulanas are wearing Aba, it's easy. Just we stretch our Aba. You see? And, but no mango juicing. Okay? <laughs> behind the cloth, it's fatwa. But do not, do not keep squeezing, you see? Just a, a good shake and that's it. You see? Behind the cloth. That's based on the hadith of Imam Ali Salatu Islam. So pretty much, we really have to observe our Islam. And that is where the ma'rifat comes. If we have ma'rifat, we will be careful in applying our religious laws, rules, and regulations. So, at this point, I don't think so. That topic, inshallah, will go tomorrow, which I had promised, the scenario of Adam alayhi salatu islam, and then um, shaitan, the khilafat and shaitan, the khilafat and angel, and the khilafat and Adam. So last Saturday, uh, last uh, Monday, we started this, and it has been kept whole, because I am trying to, yesterday, we are trying to, Put some light on the foundation of ma'rifah, the jihad of nafs, and the softness of heart. These things are required for ma'rifah. Stubborn hearts cannot get the ma'rifah. The animosities does not give us the ma'rifah. So this is just, I have been talking about foundation. Tomorrow, inshallah, if Allah wills, we are going to continue and we are going to talk about the ma'rifat of Ahlul Bayt from the uh, from that time when Adam was created. So that we are going to do some tafsir and I want you to pay attention inshallah. Uh, and if you want, you can bring your Quran and tafsir so that we can go ayat after ayat. So there, there are going to be times we are going to talk practical issues and there are going to be times we are going to talk theoretical issues. And when we talk theoretical issues, I want you to pay attention. So this ma'rifat is very important. And our Islam, we, have, we can't compromise. As I mentioned, that Western mullahs, they are compromising just to please the crowd, the Western crowd of our youngsters. They are pleasing them. And the Eastern crowds, they are pleasing the Eastern crowds. So these are culturals, culturals, and unfortunately the member is given to some of these people who affect, who poison our youngsters' mind. But we have to stick to our marja'iyya, because our marja'iyya are the authentic line in our community. Most qualified people to understand Islam. You see, one of these Western mullahs, I had a meeting with him, I, we are friendship. I said, the heart is open, but here I am blunt. So I, he said that, Sheikh, don't you think that our maraja has failed us? I said, I think we have failed our maraja. Sorry, we can agree to disagree. And then he said, don't you think, I mean this Ayatollah Sistani and Ayatollah, uh, this uh, Sheikh Wahid al-Khurasani, all that they, they have made um, our religion complicated and they gave me a few examples. I said, use your intellect. This is their, their emblem. Use your intellect. I said, Sheikh, now, if I use my intellect, I will prefer them over you. How's that? I said, I'm an ignorant, an ignorant person. I do not consider myself Ahlul Khibra or Alim or this. I'm in front of you, I consider myself an ignorant person. So when I'm an ignorant person, I see you have thoughts and I see our Maraja have thoughts and you have different thoughts than them. I see your experience is 8 to 10 years maximum in the uh, Islamic analysis. I see them 50 to 60 years. Ayatollah al-Uqma Sistani, sister, sister, he's now 70 years. And he has been doing researches about researches, researches, researches. So I have two in front of me. I have you and I have this group which you are condemning. My aql. My intellect says, follow them and not you. I'm using my aql. 
So you are telling me to use aql, so sorry. I can't, I can't discuss with you because I'm an ignorant person. But yes, I can tell you my aql says that those people, they are, they are using logical arguments, which I studied in Hausa. They are using intellect. They are using a lot of intellectual arguments. So for me, them, if one against you, they strike you. Seven, eight, nine maraja, and you won. Obviously, you're nothing intellectually. You're nothing in front of them. Sorry to say that. I respect you. You have you, a friendship. But intellectually, uh, I, I do not uh, support you. I condemn you. I reject you because you need to look into yourself. So this is how people, they need to change. If people are in a, a phase, if they realize they are wrong, they need to change. If they don't change, unfortunately, they don't have marifat. Like we have Hur. Hur had marifat. You know what Hur did? Hur committed a big crime. What was his crime? When Imam Hussain was moving towards Kufa, Hur stopped Imam Hussain He had 1,000 men. He stopped. He said, no, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, you can't go into Kufa. I have my orders. I can't allow you to go into Kufa. So Hur said, uh, Imam said, okay. And Hur was thirsty. His army was thirsty. Imam Hussein gave water. Remember, forgive those who offend you. Ma'rifat. Ma'rifat. You see, Imam gave them water. Imam knows that because of him, I will be murdered. Because of him, my children will be butchered. But yet Imam gives him water. What a noble act. Imam knows, Imam has been informed that Karbala is his final destiny. But yet, and he knows that he's dragging them to Karbala. So Imam alayhi salatu is, no. The Imam told them, okay, Hur, we will not go into Kufa. So we will go back to Medina. So he said, no, you can't go back to Medina. I have my orders. Okay, then we will keep walking. So he said, I will walk with you. But you can't go into Medina. You can't, you can't go back to Medina. You can't go into Kufa. So Imam Ali Sam walked. And a letter came to Hur from Ibn Ziyad. Stop Hussein that place. Wherever he is. And that time they were in Karbala. They had arrived in Karbala. Stop him, surround him, stop the water from him, and all those kind of sanctions were done against Imam Hussein. Now, who was the cause? Hur. Imam had in his hand <laughs> striking, killing 1,000 army is nothing. He's son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He has Abu Fadl al Abbas. He has great fighters like Ali Akbar. 1,000 men, <laughs> there's nothing for Imam, but they don't start. They don't start. That's the thing. The principles. They make the principles live till day of judgment. But if they did not care about principle, how it was uh, just like in a few seconds, he was done. Or a few minutes or a few hours. His army, 1,000 men were thirsty, weak. It was very easy for Imam to do that. But Imam does not do ghadr. Imam does not do uh, this deception, deceiving, cunning people. No. Imam is straightforward with moral values. They did not start. Why should I attack them? And then they uh, surrounded Imam Hussein alayhi salatu islam. And the day of Ashura comes. Uh, and Ihur is looking here and there. Uh, and he's looking that Imam Hussein is surrounded. Uh, some people, they told him, Hur, did you give uh, your horse water? He's thinking, uh, are they worried about uh, watering their animals? Uh, and the children of Rasulullah, children of Imam Hussein are calling uh, thirst, thirst, al-atash, al-atash. They are worried so much about their animals uh, and children of Rasulullah are thirsty. And Hur thinks a lot uh, because Hur had ma'rifat uh, even though he had done something wrong. Hur did not know 
that this will lead uh, Imam to this uh, situation. Uh, so that's why Hur is thinking a lot. Uh, what have I done? Uh, why I have done this? Uh, I am ashamed of myself. Uh, how could I allow myself to do this? Uh, one of Hur's person, Hur was a brave, uh, brave soldier, commander. Uh, one of his uh, men says, uh, Hur, I have never ever seen uh, the way you are shivering today. Uh, you are a brave soldier. What's happening with you? Hur is thinking in inside his mind, uh, his heart is melting down, uh, his marifat of Imam Hussein is rising, uh, yet uh, Hur decides to join the caravan of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, Hur takes his son, uh, his brother and his slave uh, and goes to the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, imagine, uh, this is the same Hur uh, when he came thirsty to the camp of Imam Hussein. Uh, Imam Hussein fed them water by his hand. Uh, imagine, uh, does Imam Hussein have something to give her? Uh, the children are surrounding, saying, Al Atash, Al Atash. Uh, so one day, her was guest, uh, and today he's a different guest, uh, where Imam cannot give him uh, even a cup of water. Her is coming closer and closer. Uh, his heart is being broken uh, into pieces. Uh, once he comes to Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, uh, he says, Oh son of Allah's messenger, uh, is there a chance for me for tawbah, for repentance? Uh, Imam said, uh, If you do tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you all your sins. Uh, and come, her, uh, come, Allah has forgiven you. And her says, No, my master, uh, I will not be relaxed uh, until I sacrifice myself for you and go and fight your enemies. Uh, but he, before he goes, uh, Hor says, yes, my master, uh, I have kept you in this predicament situation, uh, in this horrible situation. Uh, do you give me permission uh, to go to the house of the Sayyidaniyat, uh, the daughters of the Prophet, uh, and seek apology from them? Uh, Hor comes outside of the tent of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam uh, and says, uh, oh Sayyidaniyat, oh daughters of the Prophet, I am the one who stopped your caravan. Uh, I am the one who led you to this uh, horrible, difficult situation. Uh, I am the one who did this and I am the one who did that. One, okay, are you going to forgive me? They said, oh, horror, we forgive you. And they started screaming and crying on their difficult situation. Uh, and horror came off his horse. Uh, uh, and sat down on the ground uh, and started putting dust on his head uh, and started saying, oh my goodness, what have I done? Uh, the daughters of Prophet are crying. Uh, I have led them to this situation. Uh, and he started striking his head uh, and he was very much embarrassed. Uh, he said, I'm going to go to the enemies. Uh, I'm taking the permission. Uh, and then Nuhur comes uh, and says, Ya Aba Abdullah, I want to offer a few sacrifices. Uh, I want my son to go to the battlefield uh, and uh, sacrifice for you. The enemies were attacking. Uh, her son goes to the battlefield uh, and strikes like brave men, uh, like his father. Uh, and finally, her son uh, falls down on the ground. Uh, what happens? Uh, this is a young son. Uh, imagine if you have a youth uh, and you are in that condition. Uh, what will happen to you? Of course, your heart will be broken and bent. Uh, but don't worry, her, uh, Imam Hussein is beside you. Imam Hussein is comforting you, her. Uh, and then uh, her's brother says, uh, his name was Mus'ab, uh, give me permission. Uh, her's brother goes to the battlefield uh, and strikes the enemies from left and right uh, and finally they surround him uh, and they they kill him uh, and again imagine uh, a brother dies in front of a brother uh, a brother's body is uh, 
uh, lying in front of a brother. Uh, how would that be difficult on the heart of her? Uh, but don't worry, her. Uh, I'm beside you. Imam Hussein is beside you. Imam Hussein is still comforting you. And then finally, her slave goes to the battlefield uh, and strikes the enemies uh, and becomes martyr. Uh, here, her says, Ya Aba Abdullah, now my time has come. Uh, give me the permission. Uh, Imam Hussein gave him permission. Uh, how a brave soldier, a mighty soldier, he strike the enemies left and right, uh, and finally they surrounded him uh, and started <coughs> beating her uh, with arrows and spears and strike of sword uh, until an enemy comes uh, and blows uh, his head with a st with, uh, he strikes his head uh, with a strong blow of sword uh, the head of her splits uh, and the blood starts to come out uh, and he says assalamu alaykum ya abu abdullah her falls down uh, the family of Hadam, the companions of imam hussein alayhi salam uh, uh, they bring the body of her uh, to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, her had some few breaths left. Uh, Imam Hussein says, Oh, her, uh, you know the meaning of her. Uh, it's a free person. Uh, oh, her, uh, you are her. Uh, you are free as your mother brought you in this world and you died with freedom. Uh, you are free in this world uh, and you will be free in the hereafter. Uh, uh, but the blood was not stopping. Uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam uh, took out his handkerchief uh, and strapped the head of her. Uh, so the blood stopped. Uh, and finally, Imam Hussein her died uh, in the hands of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, and yet Imam Hussein was there. Uh, but I'm saying, uh, oh her, uh, when your young son uh, went to the battle, Field, uh, Imam Hussein comforted you. But what will happen uh, when Ali Akbar will go to the Maidan? What will happen uh, when Imam will see the arrow in his chest uh, and he will be lying on the lap of Imam Hussein? Who will comfort Imam Hussein? Or, uh, when your brother left uh, and it's a very difficult situation uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam was comforting you but when Abbas will fall beside the Euphrates his hands will be cut uh, and Imam Hussein will put the head of Abbas in his, on his lap who will comfort Imam Hussein it is said that Imam Hussein cried for a long time uh, on the body of Hazrat Abbas. Oh, horror! When you came to the tent of the daughters uh, and you felt their cry, you felt a shame. Uh, horror! If you had seen uh, the daughters of Hussein, the daughters of Rasulullah, out of their tents, uh, running here and there without the scarves and the tent will be burning uh, and they will be lashed, lashed with whips uh, and beaten and striked uh, what would have happened to your high heart O oh, Hurra Wa Muhasayna Wa Madluma Wa Sayalamu Alladheena Zalamu Ayyamun Qalabiyyan Qalibun Ala La'natullahi Ala Al-Qawm Al-Zalimeen والعاقبة للمتقين إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bless our mu'minin and mu'minat around the world, to accept our azadari, to protect our centers and our mu'minin and our mashahid the musharrafa in Sham and in Iraq and in in Medina and everywhere in the world. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to protect Zairani Imam Hussein and all the zawar. 
We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill all our hajat and hajat of the mu'min mu'minat and to cure all our sick ones and the sick ones of the mu'min mu'minat and to bless our marhumin and marhumin of the mu'min mu'minat. Ameen Rabbil Alameen wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah. Oh.